Good day, everyone. My name is Ella Kizea A. Salvarin, presenting Universalism versus Relativism, which examines issues arising from the Universalist and Relativist various approaches. For the content of this presentation, we have the infographic, which is the collection of imagery, charts, and minimal text regarding universalism and relativism. Let's start off with the whole image. As you can see, here is my full infographic. I decided to split it off into five parts in order for all of you to clearly understand what I am trying to say. For the first part of my presentation is the introductory. Debates between moral universalists and moral relativists are said to be lively in bioethics and its new area, global health ethics. Because of the situations of mutual hostility with foreign cultural customs or habits that are appearing, it challenges the fields to propose appropriate responses. So as we all are aware, global migration patterns have created multicultural communities, which much of that takes place already. Theories of moral relativism have long met with moral universalism. The dominant view in philosophy is that in universal, its meaning is moral statements follow from general moral principles that apply to everyone and apply everywhere. To put it simply, what is wrong for me, likewise might be wrong for you. And moral relativism in contrast means that there are moral princi pr principles rather that do not apply to everyone or everywhere. So for the second part of my infographic is the meaning behind universalism and relativism. What is universalism? Universalism simply states that whatever the moral facts and principles are, its philosophical and theological concept stands to the fact that it applies to the plurality of diverse jurisdictions and nations wherein morality asserts a universal authority or power in particular. So with that, universalism implies that it is possible to apply general, generalized norms and values to all people and their cultures, regardless of their context which they are located with or where they were where they came from. For example, the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it asserts various rights to individuals, wherein include the right to marry, own a property, as well as the right to have an access towards equal protection under the laws. Despite the differences of our religion, nationality, or even sexual preference, as well as the customs of social groups in a community. So meanwhile, relativism, it is the view or idea that one acquires a belief in whereas societies make their moral choices with accordance of their unique practices and acceptance, acceptance rather, that certain statements which they believe in within their existence are representing the truth. So, relativism, it is the idea that there is no universal or absolute set of principles at all. It also implies that there is no standpoint, is uniquely privileged overall, that it is advocate such ideas concerned with the dissimilarities on in moral judgments across different persons and their particular cultures for as much as it holds the matter of nobody is totally right or wrong about their behavior. Even it is 
considerably large disagreements already. So, for example, there are instances that we speak differently, dress differently, or even act differently. So this then supports the approach of relativism, whereas puts the view of each standards of reasoning as well as the frameworks of assessments. So for the next part is we have the, the human rights and the situation that I connected to my given topic. So to give you an overview, human rights are said to be universally true or valid or only true or valid relative to a given culture. Just like here in our country, our republic, which is the Philippines. So human rights as a universal concept has been debated by the concept of relativism. The contradiction between both concepts have influenced the perception perception towards human rights, as well as the state's obligation to promote and protect. So as explained by someone named Jack Donnelly, human rights basically exist since the human being as well as its nature becomes the construction of the human rights itself. So the sixth existence of human rights cannot be denied since the sense of humanity itself is already attached with the human being. So for the Philippine situation that I have come up is the war on drugs. In this case, war on drugs campaign by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, both the universalism and relativism of human rights may be found. However, these killings are considered as a violation of rights, as well as in regards with UDHR or the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So as you may observe, the extrajudicial killings practices inside the campaign has been implemented and supported by the Philippines citizens. Off guard, Philippines has ratified the human rights documents as a sign of states' willingness to promote and protect the human rights universally. Specifically, the Relativity of culture can be one of the factors for different states why they do not accept the, the concept of human rights. So even if it is Duterte's intention to reduce drugs in the Philippines by killing those people who va violate the rules, the certain action is not only a gimmick to just frighten the others as it literally means killing them in the real life. So you see in this situation, it is the Republic's responsibility to entirely protect human rights since it is not, since it is those who are being killed possess a fault or guilt at really becoming the suspect itself. Nonetheless, because of the concept of relativism, Philippines has this value that the practices they are implementing shall be understood by many and not be judged by its standards, similar to applying extrajudicial killings because as they believe, it is for the own good of the humanity. For the next part of my infographic, we have the connection of the situation to myself as well as to the whole community. I can connect the situation that I have chosen to myself when I also experienced the same thing. And the specific thing that I'm talking about was when my own rights got stepped on by somebody else in the past. As most, as most of the human beings are born to be treated coordinately and equally, I already experienced not assessing state of fairness in opportunities at such a young age. So this happened to me when on my elementary days, when my human rights towards equality was not being applied to me properly. So you see, I was not undeniably a talkative student. I mostly just sits around in a corner quietly or, or just not to 
communicate with other people because I don't really want to blubber about everything everywhere. So I think that is one of the reasons why there was an unfair treatment in my past time since I was not enthusiastic enough. Although my academic performances were extremely great at that time, it was still not inadequate for their criteria. So for the next is the connection to who. I may connect the given situation to the community as a whole when the Constitution of the Philippines stated that every Filipino has the right to be secure in the persons, in their persons or other houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures of whatever nature except upon probable cause. So human rights are accordingly the basic rights and freedoms to which everyone is entitled on the basic of their common humanity. Um, they include civil and political rights, as well as economical, social, and even cultural rights. So human rights also specify that it is, it is presents that it is for the protection of everyone since without discrimination according to race, sex, or even religion, political opinion, or other status. All of these are determined personally by judge, but still loads of people do not comply. So, so which is why some of the Filipinos are culturally specific that human rights should also be culturally oriented. At the end of the day, since I have learned that Wherever each of us go, there will be really instances that the approaches across various norms um, and values in this world cannot be stopped as it already turned into a framework that formulates the, the similarities of ideas between all of us individuals. So for the last part of my infographic, we have the quotation by Wilson Kennedy. Those who judge will never understand, and those who understand will never judge. Thank you for staying with me until the end. I hope you guys learned something for today. And as for the references, here is the slide for it. See you guys next time.